Great Dixter is in East Sussex. It's a 15th century manor house with a luchens wing and it was the home of the, the extraordinary gardener Christopher Lloyd. Who, um, his parents owned the property and Christopher was born here and spent most of his life here and he was one of the, the, the most talented gardeners and garden writers in the, in the world. And um, he died in 2006 and set up the Great Dixter Charitable Trust and um, and so we continue in his in his footsteps. It remains the most dynamic, um, experimental, um, pioneering, exciting garden in the world. It's it's one of those places where, you know, it's constantly evolving, constantly full of surprises. But it, the spirit still remains the same. It's one of of striving forward with with brilliant horticulture and and with biodiversity and sustainability going hand in hand with all of this you know um, our recent biodiversity audits showed that this garden um, ranks number 26 in the most biodiverse places in the whole of the United Kingdom and that includes all the nature reserves and the treble SIs and all of those and it just shows how a intensive um, flower rich garden that's highly gardened by skilled gardeners can can be a haven for all this wildlife which means that we don't have to rewild everything that our, each one of our gardens can play a part in and in increasing biodiversity in our in our rural spaces but also in our urban and suburban places um, so that's a very important factor as far as Dixter is concerned and also very important with Dixter is is education you know, we've trained gardeners for years and years and years and we're regarded as being um, the number one training place for flower gardeners in the world. So we have gardeners from, from North America, from South America, from all over Europe, whether it's France, Belgium, Germany, Italy, um, right the way through to the Middle East, to Turkey and to the Far East that come here to, to garden in, in the Dixter style. And that Dixter style is about recognizing the sense of place, knowing the importance of history and how you take a garden forward, how you manage it within a, with a team, how you push and pull work to be efficient, but also it's about, about being extraordinarily creative so that you're not just doing the obvious things, but you're playing with plants in the most artistic way. And then above all of that sits this sort of sensitivity to all the creatures that share that space with you. You know, all those solitary bees, the mining bees, the caterpillars, the true flies, the damson flies, the, the mycorrhiza that's in the soil as, as well. All of that is part of our world. And it makes you feel really good that you are actually passing the baton on to the next generation with all that sensitivity in mind. Britain has lost nearly half its biodiversity since the Industrial Revolution, and experts warn that continued biodiversity loss will lead to an irreversible ecology crisis. This country is ranked in the bottom 10% in the world, and the worst among G7 nations. In June 2021, G7 leaders agreed commitments to halt and reverse biodiversity loss by 2030. Without doubt, Soon it will be mandatory for businesses to assess and disclose their impacts on nature. Business leaders will need to align with organisations and experts to help them achieve their biodiversity targets. We are seeking support from businesses who wish to help us to continue to create an exceptional space for nature and to share our approach with others.